Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Bonita here from Bonita Doodles. And today is the first part in what I hope is going to be an extensive series on how to do animal, not necessarily fur, as I'm looking at extending that. And you'll see as the tutorials progress, I intend to release one every Friday. So we're now gonna call it Fur Friday. And yes, just to give you hints and tips on how to achieve a realistic look on the type of fur that you're aiming for or the type of animal skin. So as I say, we're gonna cover quite a variety. So if you are new to the channel and this is something that you think will be helpful to you, please do hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you do enjoy it and find it helpful. And yeah, just keep an eye out. If you hit the bell button, it will notify you when a new video has gone up. If you have a special request, please pop one in the comments below and I'm more than happy to cover that if I haven't already got it on my list for the next couple of tutorials. So yeah, keep your eyes peeled. To begin with, we are actually indenting this particular paper. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop the reference picture up now so you'll be able to see the full reference picture and the actual patch that we drew from because fur, without it being in context, can look a bit strange. So you're probably looking at my square going, that doesn't make any sense. But when you look at it zoomed out and then zoomed out again, it will make much more sense to you. So I've indented the paper already and the reason we indent it is it gives you some cleaner lines when you're doing quite thick whiskers and if you've got some white wispy hair areas that uh, it just makes the process much much easier especially if you're starting out and you're not used to leaving negative space for your highlights it's worth having a go at doing the indenting method always put a bit of either thick cardboard fold a piece of card a few times I use a bit of um, spare kitchen liner that I had left over because you need something soft underneath for you to be able to make a deep enough gully that when you then color over it, the gully doesn't get filled up very quickly with the color that you're using. So that's what you saw me doing just there. I've written the colors on the top for you. So we're working with warm gray two, warm gray one. We're working with the buff titanium, the luminance. You can either use ivory if you don't have the luminance pencil or you can use a white if you need to. Um, we're also using warm gray four, paints gray and black. Now I've layered down a very light layer of paints gray because actually in the black areas, uh, the cat is very, very dark. So rather than building up all the warm grays, we're going actually straight in with the Payne's Grey um, because in the dark areas, he's actually quite cold. In the white area, he's quite warm, but it is very white according to the reference photo. Now, I personally don't like to leave any area of my paper white, so I prefer to color it in. So I've just done a base layer of warm gray one, and that gives me then uh, a wax layer to build upon. I'm now going in with my warm grey four and that is so I can bring some dark hairs into the light area and we do them in a crossover motion. If you do them straight down, they are much less natural looking. Sometimes the messier, the more natural it looks. So don't be regimented about having all the lines going in the same direction because it just doesn't work that way. Have them where they cross over slightly and then you'll get a much more natural look. So I'm just building up the fur going out into the white areas by using my warm gray four. I've now swapped back over to my Payne's gray and what we're doing is we're building up the depth in where the darkest areas of the blacks are. Now, because this is quite cold black, I'm using the Payne's Grey because it has that blue tone to it. If it was a, um, a warm black, uh, there is a video, by the way, I'll pop a card information to it, which shows you the difference on how you can create a warm black and a cold black. Um, a warm black, I would use something like a dark sepia underneath, uh, just to give the tone a much more warmer appearance. 
Now you'll see that I rarely go in with any fur detail for the first couple of layers on the top part of his head. And that is because if you look at your reference photo, you can't actually see individual tiny hairs. So don't be afraid to leave any spaces, any patches that just have a, a large solid area. It's not unusual to see that in a reference photo. Don't be afraid to do that. If you want to include hairs, then that's absolutely fine. I personally prefer to keep it as true to the reference as I can. Of course, improving on it as we all like to do. Um, but yeah, having those blocks of solid colour actually, again, give you a much more realistic feel to your portrait. So don't be afraid to do that. It's only the last couple of layers that you'll start to see me tweak and get in some extra hairs and things. And that's because I felt like I wanted to have just a little bit more detail in there. But I still kept quite a good solid level of colour in the one area. can take a while to build up black fur so patience is key and it's taken me a long time to learn that because I don't have a lot of patience as most of you know if you followed me for some time I'm using my Tombow Mono superb eraser if you don't have one already there's a link in the description below which takes you to my affiliate uh, link and in there you'll find the Tombow Mono which you can grab really really good really good eraser and it's really good for getting chunkier softer highlights so where i've just gone on the top of the head there to create that sort of triangle highlight it's giving you a much softer feel so there's a lot less to have to try and battle with later on so we then start drawing around that area and that's where we start creating the negative space highlights again i'm now putting another layer of the paints gray on and if you notice, this is where I only just start to put a few hairs. And you see, I'm not being precise. I'm being quite sporadic. Although I'm going in the direction that the fur is, I'm not having them all lined up like nice soldiers. And that is a lot of um, mistakes that people make when they first start doing fur, is they feel that if it's all going in the same direction and it's quite short fur, that it all has to stand in these nice, neat lines. Don't. Just cross over a few. Be a little bit wild with your hands. Let your hand relax into your portrait a little bit more and you'll find that it makes a big difference. See, all the time we're building up, we're going back in with our Payne's Grey. We're mixing it up a little bit. We're just getting a few finer hairs in. I'm now going in with my Warm Grey 4. Because the further you come into the white, the lighter sometimes that the shadows are. It's not always the case, but you need to look at your reference to be able to know exactly where you should be placing these. I've now literally just started going in with the black. It's the, my second to last layer. And you'll see again, I'm doing quite a solid layer. Um, although I'm doing a few furs in the lighter area up in the top left hand corner there, you saw that I went in again with a a solid color the more you do these the more you're going to get practice so you know pop yourself over to pexels pixabay um, any free reference photo sharing site and just download a few take a little square and have a practice it's a really really good way of doing it and you can do that with skin eyes you can have a go with the lip texture hands Fur, scales, feathers, we, I mean we're going to be covering all of these in our series. Uh, we're mainly going to be doing animals first, I will probably then move on to people after that. But we'll see how it goes. So I'm going in with the Payne's Grey again and I'm brushing over, I'm washing, glazing, whatever you want to call it, over the top of exactly where I've been. One, not only does it blend your pencil because I'm a stickler for not seeing your paper underneath, it drives me crazy. Um, and two, it just helps tonally bring everything back together again. All this building of layers is what, is what gives you the depth in your fur and that's what you need to do. You need to keep going with those layers. Don't just stop at layer one or two, it will not give you the depth that you need. If you want to look at scraping any highlights in, you need a really good chunky bit of wax down. So bear that in mind if you are going to be looking at getting the old scalpel out and having a go at adding highlights that way. Mm. 
just refining again with the Payne's Grey. Just getting in all those little details, all those little shadow areas that you might see the shadows. And it's just now all really just tweaking the shapes of areas. If you're not too sure if you have that right, so <laughs> bless you. <laughs> That's so staying in there. Yeah, just look at the shape of the area that you're trying to achieve. Draw that shape first and then start working on it. I'm now using my Luminance Buff Titanium. Titanium Buff, never remember which way around it said. This is where you can use your white, your ivory, depending on the tone of the fur that you have. I personally prefer the Luminance because it's a much softer lay down and I find it works over layers of wax much easier than my other white pencil so that's why I prefer that. I'm just doing a few tiny little white highlights and I'm using the back of my slice tool. Again if you're after one of those the link is down below. Just if you click on the affiliate link it will take you to my shop section and in there is all the tools and things that I use and recommend. I'm using the luminance now to blend and what we're doing is we're blending where the white fur merges down into a much blockier section on his face. So again, it gives you that smooth transition. We don't just stop and start in fur. Everything merges really, really nicely. You get soft focusing, you get very sharp hairs. So it's really, really looking and observing and making sure that you're getting all that information down. As I say, hopefully you're finding this useful. Please let me know if you do by giving me a thumbs up. Pop a comment below if these are new tricks that you haven't seen before, if you have a preferential way of doing it. I'm also I'm always up for having a, a chat with you guys about that, but I'm now popping in with the black and I'm just refining those shadows, making sure I'm going dark enough in certain areas. And yeah, just really starting to refine it now, but we are, we are pretty much at the end. And hopefully you can see this with regards to the reference photo, it's looking pretty much how it should be. So there you have it, your first of hopefully many, I believe actually I have nearly 100. So yeah, I'm gonna be busy and you're gonna be very well informed, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit that bell button, and then that way you'll be notified of all the new tutorials that go up. Again, I'm refining very, very last minute with the warm grey 4, just in the little eye bit here where his eyebrows come up, just to make sure that he's got the nice shadow and we're forming some shape within his head. Otherwise, we don't want a very flat looking cat. Again, your photo reference will be different, but this is just to advise you on the colours that I have used and the method that I have done it in. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this and I shall see you on the next Fur Friday.